I've won, so um, I figured that I should say a little bit about um, the weight of certain types of sword. Um, as there seems to be quite a bit of interest in the weight of swords, and it's uh, provoked quite a lot of discussion. Um, first thing to say is that any type of sword will have a weight range. Okay, so um, if you take a medieval one-handed sword, there are many types of them. Uh, if you take a katana, there are, there are big ones and there are shorter ones and there's different types. If you take a rapier, it's the same thing. Okay, so any type of sword that you pick, there are different kinds of them and they weigh different amounts. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is really just a very general guideline for the sort of weights that you would expect a certain type of sword to be, the sort of the generic uh, type of that, uh, of that given sword. Okay, so um, let's start off with a very popular type of sword. We take um, the European longsword, there's the old uh, Albion Ringek again. Um, so, long swords actually vary a lot in weight, um, largely depending on their size, because the description long sword is a very general term, uh, and it can go up to describe uh, something as big as, as you know, a, a two-handed sword, really, uh, something that you can't really use in, in one hand comfortably, um, or it could go down to describe, really, a one-handed sword that has just got a longer handle than average. But there is a sort of average longsword, and, and these, these Albions, for commercial purposes, tend to fall within that kind of size range. Um, and they're the sort of sword that can be used relatively easily in one hand, um, and, but they're sort of more suited to two-handed use. Okay, So they're primarily a two-handed sword, but the, you could use as a one-handed sword on horseback, or if you were using a shield or a... Uh, grabbing someone with your left hand or whatever. Okay, so this type of average sort of middle ground longsword tend to weigh uh, about three and a half pounds, three to three and a half pounds on average. You do get big examples um, that, that weigh as much as five or six pounds, um, but, uh, but most of them of, of this kind um, or even the earlier broader bladed uh, type, and I'll talk about oak shot typologies in a different video. Um, but this sort of hand and a half sword tend to be about three and a half pounds. So fairly heavy for a one handed sword, um, but much lighter than a true two handed sword. Um, I don't have an example to show you. I used to have a big two handed sword, but I got rid of it because I never used it for anything. Um, a large two-handed sword of the sort that if you put the point on the ground comes up to your chin or possibly even the top of your head. Uh, a true two-handed sword, sometimes known as a great sword or a spadone or as some of you call it a zweihander. That type of sword tends to weigh in the region of five to eight pounds. Okay, so bearing in mind this is three and a half, five to eight pounds is a lot more. But we should compare like size with like size. As I've mentioned in other of my videos and the comments to my videos, um, if you look at pole weapons that are of a similar length to the two-handed sword, for example the pole axe, uh, they tend to weigh a similar amount of weight. Uh, so you're talking about seven or eight pounds uh, usually maximum. You do get heavier ones, but most of them tend to be about seven or eight pounds. So generally speaking, a weapon that's kind of person height is usually about seven or eight pounds, regardless of whether it's a sword or a pole axe. So, hand and a half sword, three and a half pounds. Now, to stay with the medieval Europeans, we go to a medieval one-handed sword. Well, these are just as varied as the long swords are, okay? Um, this is not, not a particularly big one, but it is quite broad at the base. So this is a type of sword that was very popular from the, about the middle of the 14th century to uh, right the way through the 15th century, with a, with a sort of debatably a oak shot type 15 or perhaps a type 18 blade. Um, uh, quite pointy, quite thrusty, and the point of balance is fairly far back towards the hand with this type of sword, for a medieval sword. Um, and these one-hand swords, medieval one-hand swords, tend to weigh about two to two and a half pounds. Okay? Remember that because it's important to when we look at some other swords in a minute. So two to two and a half pounds. So they tend to be about a pound lighter than the long swords, okay? So they're much more manageable in one hand, you can move them very quickly, back edge, front edge, whatever you want to do with them. They're very, very manoeuvrable, nicely balanced, and quick weapons, okay? So one-handed swords, medieval one-handed swords from Europe tend to be about two pounds to two and a half pounds. 
You do get heavier ones, there's one in the Wallace collection, quite a famous one in fact, I think it's A4260, which is actually over, over three pounds in weight, it's quite heavy for a one-handed sword. But equally you get some that are even lighter that are under two pounds, that are like one and a half pounds. So there's a variation there, as with all sorts. Okay, so staying with Europe now, we move on to the rapier. Okay, this is just a representative, this is a practice weapon, so not, uh, not that similar to the real thing. It's got a very flexible blade, the real one's a stiff blade. Um, but rapiers, um, they vary a lot in weight, depending on what they were designed for. And, and rapier is it's something I'll talk about in another video, but it's a very loose term. Uh, it can be a very narrow thrusting weapon that's perhaps more catered towards dueling, or it can be quite a beefy cut and thrust blade. It's actually more like a, a European uh, medieval um, one-handed sword blade, but on the complex hilt. So if we take a middle ground rapier that's a sort of, sort of somewhere, it could be used military, it could be used for dueling, it's got a long narrow blade, the weights on these tend to be similar to a medieval one-handed sword, okay, so they tend to be about two and a half pounds. Rapiers, contrary to some people's perception, are not light. What people are thinking of when they're thinking of a light thrusting sword is actually a small sword from the 18th century, okay, um, and that's what gave rise to the fencing foil. The rapier is a long weapon, so although it's narrower, they've taken the same amount of steel and they've forged it into a longer but narrower blade. Okay, so you're actually talking about pretty much the same amount of metal in the medieval one-handed sword as in the rapier. It's just a different shape, but a similar amount of weight. Obviously they have different points of balance, although not always, sometimes they've got quite similar points of balance. <coughs> now, moving on to, um, we'll go over to Asia and then we'll come back to Europe. So, the Tulwa. Tulwars, again, there's a huge variation in them. However, they do have a sort of middle ground and they also tend to weigh about two pounds. This is actually quite a, a beefy, big one, big thick one, and this one's nearer two and a half pounds, okay? Even though it's got quite a short blade, there's quite a lot of weight in this blade. So this is a heavy cutting or slashing weapon um, and that weighs about two and a half pounds, okay? Um, you do get ones that are very light, they're only about one and a half pound. You get some that are really heavy and bigger, that are about three pounds. But most tulwars tend to be about two pounds to two and a half pounds. Staying in Asia, we'll go back to our uh, viewer's favourite, the katana. Uh, this katana, as you've seen me weigh on another video, weighs uh, nearly two and a half pounds, just under two and a half pounds. So again, we're looking at a sword that's in this range of between two pounds and two and a half pounds. And a lot of people have commented, ah, but that's a, that's a two-handed sword. It's very true. When you're handling it two-handed, it's very uh, light and quick and easy to handle because it's a relatively light weapon for a two-handed weapon. However, to counter that, it's incredibly short for a two-handed weapon. There are almost no European two-handed weapons which have uh, a hitting portion as short as this. Okay, it's a very short weapon with a long handle, but if we look at the total length, it's similar to a European one-handed sword, and it's similar in weight. As you would expect, it's got a similar amount of steel, and in the sword, the, the, the steel that makes up the blade and the tang inside the grip is the heavy part of the sword. So, given a fixed length, you would expect uh, a similar sort of weight to a European sword, and indeed you do have. So, uh, two pounds, two and a half pounds of this type of katana. Of course, as with the other swords, you get other types. Some are, some are bigger. Obviously, you get Nodashi and Daikatana, really big swords uh, from Japan that are much heavier and they're more similar to the weight of European two-handed swords. But the, the small, average katana is about two and a half pounds. So, now we move on to the uh, European sabers from the 19th century. I should mention as well that uh, 17th and 18th century um, European swords, so things like back swords, um, uh, basket hilted broadswords, uh, skiavona, these sort of things tend to be similar weight and balance, in fact very similar weight and balance to 19th century sabres. And these uh, basket hilted um, one, uh, one edge, single edge, some of them are two edged of course, um, uh, military swords. Um, essentially fall into, again, this two pound to two and a half pound range. Uh, 
Here we've got a particularly big cavalry sword in front, which is two and a half pounds. And here we have the, for fighting on foot, it's actually a foot artillery, but we'll call it an infantry uh, sword because it had the same blade on it, uh, which weighs two pounds. But I should mention that you get infantry swords which are heavier, that are up to two and a half pounds, and sometimes even over that. And equally you get cavalry swords which are lighter, which are sometimes only two pounds. And you should also remember that infantry officers often actually fought on horseback because they rode around on a horse, so as circumstance took them they might have to fight on horse or on foot. And equally, cavalry sometimes could not fight as cavalry and had to fight on foot as well. Uh, so they dismounted and fought with a, a short uh, firearm known as a carbine, um, uh, or pistols perhaps, and, uh, and a cavalry sword. Um, both of these swords, despite the fact that there's uh, half, half a pound's weight between them, yes, the, the two pound sword is lighter in hand, quicker, a bit more, bit more manoeuvrable. Um, the cavalry sword at two and a half pounds is more beefy, you've got to use more, more of your body and arm to get strength into it, but it's still a relatively quick weapon. Okay, so, to sum up, what do we have? One-handed swords in general, um, from Europe at least, are usually two pounds to two and a half pounds. That's your sort of middle weight, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about medieval swords, rapiers, uh, 18th century uh, basket-hilted swords, or Elizabethan um, back swords, or whether you're talking about 19th century sabres. They have this range usually of two pounds to two and a half pounds. Why? Because that's what most people can comfortably handle, either on horseback or on foot. And bear in mind, you can't usually switch sword, you need to be able to fight in both situations. So what most people can handle comfortably is two pounds to two and a half pounds. Two-handed swords vary depending on their size. The katana is a two-handed sword, but it's only the size of a one-handed sword in total length. So it weighs the same as a one-handed sword, two pounds to two and a half pounds. We go to the bigger, long, uh, the longer uh, two-handed swords, the long swords, and you go up about a pound to about three and a half pounds, sometimes four pounds, depending what type of blade you've got. Um, and then you get to really big swords, and you get to five, six, seven pounds, and it goes up. And the closer to the uh, size of a pole weapon you get, the closer to the weight of a pole weapon you get. So I hope that gives you a kind of general overview. There's lots of exceptions to the rule, and for any type of sword there's a big variation, but most swords of that type do fall into this middle ground uh, of those kind of weights that I've just mentioned. I hope you find that helpful. Thank you.